Now, what I need to break down for y'all is this concept called prize game, right? There's different types of game. There's different ways of approaching the game, right? Now, when we're talking about dom sub dynamics, masculine feminine dynamics, or what I consider the sexual polarity quadrant, is breaking things down on more than just the level of masculine and feminine. Because you can be masculine without being dominant. You can be dominant without being masculine, right? Somebody can be a masculine submissive, which is to be uh, reciprocal, transactional, or cooperative, right? That's what it means to be masculine submissive. That's just your primary mode of being. Because the value that you're asking is not the value that you're giving. So that means you need to trade something else to get what you want. That's masculine submissive. So in a lot of relationships, it's going to typically work like this. You got masculine submissive person's trying to be that find someone else who's also masculine submissive then operate with each other fully on that transactional uh, reciprocal point of view while assuming or hoping that everybody is getting everything that they want out of the scenario then we also have to keep in mind the feminine dominance right when you're playing the masculine submissive game right that's where and that's basically trying to enter into a relationship somewhat as equals, but not completely. You know, you also have to watch out for feminine dominance, which are those who will pretend to be masculine submissive or pretend to be feminine submissive. Right. So that they can bait and switch and get what they want out of the scenario through manipulation. And this is very important for me to break down what I'm talking about before I get into what prize game is. Right. So. When you often enter into a relationship or you enter into a dynamic where you're dealing with an individual, there is value that you bring to the table and there's value that they bring to the table. Right? It's value that you bring and value that they bring. Typically, how it's going to work is that you're both going to, if you get into a relationship, typically you both want at least a certain level of the full package with that individual. But a lot of the times it doesn't work that way. So a man is typically going to try to add non-sexual value or get, give non-sexual access to himself, right? So he might, you know, pay for all the dates, take a woman out a few times, try to entertain her, and then eventually that woman will give him access to her sexually. And when he gets access to her sexually, then boom, that's how they're dealing with each other. And then they try to make a relationship work from there. So if you ever notice... The man's non-sexual access is not equivalent to the woman's non-sexual access. He's not getting to know that woman because he genuinely wants to get to know that woman. He's trying to make her feel comfortable enough to have sex with him. And if he gets attached to the investment that he's making before they have sex, or he gets attached to the sex itself, then typically they'll end up being in a relationship if the woman decides that she likes the non-sexual value that the man's bringing to her. But there's a lot of power struggles that happen along the way. People not knowing their place, right? Because you have to understand that when it comes to sex and a relationship, there's the masculine and the feminine position, which means there's a certain way that you want to go about dating and relationships. But then there's also the dominant and the submissive, which means who's going to be the primary giver of pleasure. Who's going to be the primary receiver of pleasure? Who's going to be the primary receiver of control? Who's going to be the primary giver of control, right? So how the feminine dominant typically might work is to be feminine up front to the way that they believe the other person wants to approach them so that they can stroke their ego enough to get them attached to their ego stroke and then to take it away to play on the idea of inconsistency or manipulation and then to give them a high level of pleasure emotionally and or sexually so that the person is attached to them so that they can be in a cycle of an emotional roller coaster that can keep the dynamic going until it burns out that's the feminine dominant model now now i need to break into what the feminine submissive and the masculine dominant is right because when you understand the feminine submissive in the masculine dominant that's where you get into prize game right so prize game is basically this you lead with what it is that you want out of the scenario for your ego right but you lead with an understanding that by this person being attached to you on the level of what you want to do up front what you're willing to give up front it puts them in a perspective to where if they want more 
then they have to meet your standards about what it takes to do more. That's what being the prize is. The prize is being able to lead with the value that the person feels like they're bringing to you up front and to subvert that expectation, but they still want more. So what I do have to say is this, just because somebody wants what you know you typically are viewed to want from them doesn't mean that you're the prize. So if you're a man and you lead with sex and a woman, all she wants is sex, you're not the prize, right? You're on an equal playing field with that woman where you want a sexual situation, right? You're in a sexual situation and she said, I'm sexually attracted enough to you so that sex can be what we do, but I don't want anything else other than that, right? So you get fuck zoned by a woman. That's something that can happen. And the friend zone is prize game for a woman, right? Understand what I'm saying? So the friend zone is prize game for a woman. So the prize game works like this. A man can friends on a woman to where he's comfortable giving her non-sexual access to him because her non-sexual access is appealing. So it's like, all right, cool. We can be friends. We can talk. We can do some business together. But he's not pursuing anything more than friendship. Right? Now, when an individual doesn't pursue more than that on their own, but then because your ego is stroked, now you want more than that, then that's kind of subverting the expectation as well. So as a man, you can be dealing with a woman on a sexual level, like her personality and say that you want more without her saying that she wants more. And then now you're pursuing her non-sexually. That's something that a lot of guys get caught up into. Right. Now, on the other side, a woman can pursue a man for friendship or for non-sexual companionship. And then when they're dealing with each other on the non-sexual level, she can say, okay, I want to fuck you now. Now, it doesn't mean that this automatically concerns her to a relationship. You get what I'm saying? So prize game just basically works by you being someone who presents up front to the other person what they are typically deemed to want from you. So if you're a woman, a man is attracted to you because of your mind he's attracted to you because of your personality and he's willing to pursue you on a basis of enjoying that but he still wants the full package at the end of the day so that means he's pursuing you because of your personality but he still wants access to you sexually so that means that that man can date a woman for an extended period of time right just taking her out on dates or just spending time with her talking to her giving her a lot of uh unfiltered non-sexual access to him <clears throat> but then he wants a relationship without sex even taking place. And then when he says he wants a relationship or he says he wants the sexual aspect, then the woman may say, okay, well, this is what we have to do. Right? So she may say, well, I want you to be my husband first. or I want us to be engaged first. or I want us to be in a long-term relationship first. That's the prize game. The man enjoyed the woman for her non-sexual access. He gave what would be his leverage up front and then when he wanted more she set the standards by which more could be established that's the woman being the prize right now as a man prize game works like this you approach a woman on a sexual level or she approaches you on a sexual level right and when that happens and it doesn't matter who approaches who it's really about what happens when you get into it he subverts the expectation to where now instead of the woman feeling like she's giving the man pussy right which would make it you know a, a quicker process to where she would want more out of the situation to feel like she's getting something for her body now she feels like she's getting sex from the man he's giving her dick instead of her giving him pussy right now when this particular dynamic occurs if that woman's emotions and her desire for that man as far as a relationship is something that gets compounded based on the fact that the sex is good and she likes how he carries himself as a man then she may be his fuck buddy for an extended period of time now when she's his fuck buddy for an extended period of time she's willing to deal with him on his terms as she deals with him on his terms 
when she realizes that she likes this man for more than just sex, right? That's when she starts to campaign for that position. When she campaigns for that position and she says she wants more, that's when the man tells her what's going to be necessary for you to go to the next level of a relationship. Meaning we're fuck buddies right now. We're getting to the point where we're friends with benefits, right? Or what k Zagan would call homie lover friends. And then from that place, you decide you want a relationship. If they decide that they also want a relationship while you're having sex with them, that's when they get to the point where when you set your standards, instead of them just bait and switching, you set the standards in a way that stretches and then they meet those standards from a feminine submissive place. And then you get into that relationship if that's something you're predisposed to doing. Now, there are certain issues with the prize game on either side. One of those main issues is that this right here, your game has to be tight enough to be able to get somebody on the level of what you would want. So if you're a man and you're playing the prize game, right, which is you're taking the masculine dominant role, then how that typically works is like this. You have to find a woman who you're attracted to. So one, you have to actually be attracted to her, right? Not based on anybody else's standards, but based on your own. You have to be attracted to her. Then after being attracted to her, you have to be non-sexually attracted to her as well and be able to show emotional discipline and to not jump into a relationship prematurely. Because individuals can bait and switch. One thing about the feminine submissive is that if a person is insecure, if they have a low cup, then they may give of themselves a lot, given the impression that they desire you when really they're doing that because they want control. So they're trying to lean on their own understanding of what it's going to take to pull you. But when you take the masculine dominant role as a man, you have to understand that there's going to be times where a woman's cup may get low and she might decide that she'd rather deal with a man who's less dominant or less masculine because he's pouring into her cup without her having to pour into his cup first. So it's, it's putting her into a situation where when you're the masculine dominant and you're not, you know, and you're also under promising and over delivering, then when that woman is dealing with you, she may decide she wants to go deal with somebody else. Right. She may say, well, I want a relationship and you got to let her go. Because she's not in a position where she has enough in her cup. To go through the steps that will be necessary for you to be willing to be in a relationship with her. Also, it has to be a woman who you're non-sexually attracted to. Which means that you have to be compatible outside of sex before you're willing to be into a relationship. You're dealing with each other on that first level of sex. You're compatible on that level. And you have to establish that compatibility. But after you establish that compatibility, she might move forward. And as she moves forward with it, she'll campaign for that position. You set the standards and then you go forward from there. She has to be a woman who's actually has the cup to go there, who you're actually attracted to on a sexual and a non-sexual level. And that's kind of the hard part for women who play the, the, the prize game. It's oftentimes when they play the, play the prize game, they may not actually be sexually attracted to the man who they're able to play that game with. Right? Oftentimes when a woman plays the prize game where she's taking the masculine dominant role, uh, there's a certain inherent level of femininity and submissiveness in her to where she may just leave you for, you know, a man who's more dominant or a man who's more masculine. Right. Because for a lot of women, masculine energy is a defense mechanism for a lot of women. Dominance is a defense mechanism. It's from a fear of giving up control. So when you understand this aspect of things. I think that there are some women who can play the masculine dominant position. And they can integrate with the individual and have a full relationship if things can work out well. But that's the exception and not the rule. Right. And it, it's more likely for a man to be able to take the masculine dominant role within a relationship and things work out a little bit better. From my opinion, it's not always going to work like that, but that's just my opinion. Because a lot of the times when a woman takes the masculine dominant role of, you know, of the man pursuing her for her non-sexual access. He just wants to talk to her. He just wants to spend time with her. He just wants to be around her. He wants a relationship, but sex isn't really his main priority. But then he wants it over time. Well, of course, he's going to want it up front. And that's another part is that a man might bait and switch too. 
But if he wants a relationship and he wants sex and she sets her standards about what it's going to take to do that, then she's playing the plot prize role. But oftentimes when a woman does that, it's because she doesn't sexually desire the man enough for to really have that pull in that direction. And that's another thing about the prize game. You have to have emotional discipline and sexual discipline. Right. So if a woman has the ability to truly have mastery over her sexual desires and she chooses a man who she is sexually attracted to and she runs the prize game and then they integrate. Then from that place, they can have a full relationship because keep in mind, somebody who's feminine submissive for as a man or a woman is somebody who is a prize in their own right. It's just when you're the prize in prize game, your value is something that is decided and agreed upon up front. Your program is something that a person walks into. When they walk into your program, they get with that program, they follow those instructions, and they get to the point where they meet the standards to where you're willing to be in an integrated, full relationship with them. Right? One thing about the prize game is that there's often competition. All right? So when you're a prize as a man, you're going to have multiple women that you're sleeping with. And the best woman wins. And the best woman isn't always the most attractive woman, but the woman who's able to get on your program the best, the woman who has the most value to your life. Another thing is like with uh, women who play the, the, the prize game, there's going to be a lot of competition. So that means that whoever is bringing the most value to her life non-sexually, that's going to be who she chooses to go forward with. The issue with that oftentimes is that most men who provide a lot of value non-sexually, not all, definitely not all, but most who do is because they don't offer sexual value. So they're really being masculine submissive. And that's where the stretching process, where it takes time, right? That's like a man who might wait multiple, multiple months to have sex with a woman. And he's really just, you know, maybe even years because he sees her as a prize and he's pursuing her and he's enjoying what he's doing. Because the difference between masculine submissive and feminine submissive is that with the feminine submissive, there's no guarantee. But you don't need a guarantee because the guarantee comes from how much you're enjoying the time that you spend with the individual. Right. The masculine submissive is you kind of need a guarantee. So you might pour out some. Right. But after a while, you're going to get burnt out. Same thing with feminine dominance. You, you can invest some, but after a while you get burnt out. Or you get frustrated because the person won't allow you to manipulate them to be in control. Right? So this is how a lot of prize game works. Oftentimes there is a process of vetting, a process of waiting. And not just waiting, but working. You actually got to put the work in. You got to campaign for the position that you want. Because if you don't campaign for that position, another person is going to jump right ahead of you. Right? Something important to understand when it comes to prize game. So, it's really about being able to lead with what the other person typically thinks that they're adding to you. So, as a man, a woman typically sees her body as a way that she's adding value to you. When you subvert that expectation and take the power away from her sexuality, if she gives over to your sexual power and then she's being feminine with you as well, then she's in that feminine submissive position, right? Where she's emotional, right? She's fluid. She's getting on your program, but she's doing it from a position of following your instructions to get where you're trying to go. She's following your lead. But the sexual dynamic is enough to sustain her for that period of time. And when she wants more, she lets you know she wants more. And then you set the standards about what it's going to take to actually be more. And it works the same way with the, the prize game for a woman. Right? So she might be dating a guy, going out on multiple dates, spending time with him, talking to him. You know, he's pursuing her for her non-sexual access, not because he wants to fuck, but because he genuinely likes her, her company. He genuinely likes her genuinely likes her conversation genuinely likes her presence right and then when he gets to the point where he wants it to be more he wants it to be a relationship where he wants sex to transpire he lets the woman know and she lets him know where the stands to be for that to happen right 
And when that occurs, it's a stretching process because someone can easily fake it. Someone who's masculine and submissive might be, you know, may not have the patience. They might say, okay, well, I'll do three dates. After three dates, I'm not waiting any longer. If we're not fucking, I'm up out of there, right? Because, you know, you're trying to add value to get what you want out of it. And someone who's feminine dominant, they may not have the patience to go through that whole process of truly getting to know the individual, truly giving up control. So, and when you stretch it out, then you won't really be able to get with it. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. And that's just how a lot of it works when it comes to prize game. So for a woman to run prize game, she has to actually be desirable for a relationship. And she has to be, her, her company has to be good. Her conversation has to be great. Her presence and her essence has to be undeniable to the point where a man is not focused on sex. You know, and for a man to run a prize game, he has to be able to satisfy a woman sexually and his masculine essence and his dominance has to be to the point where the woman isn't thinking, okay, when am I going to get in a relationship? When am I going to get in a relationship? When am I going to get in a relationship? Because you're enjoying what you're doing on an intrinsic level enough to what, you're, to, what you, to what you are doing with that individual at that time is enough to sustain you while you are campaigning for more. So this is Coach Brody, the surprise game, I'm out.